Hey guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video, I'm just going to be showing you how to create a standing seam roof in Revit. Well, actually, it's going to be a regular roof, but the standing seam element of the roof uh, is going to be uh, kind of the, the, the topic of the video. Uh, now, if you don't know, standing seam roofs uh, are those roofs uh, that have those, you know, those kind of vertical edges that kind of run uh, down the, 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 the slope of the roof. Uh, that's that's the whole thing. Uh, it's just a type of a seam. Uh, it's designed so the water doesn't get through, obviously. Uh, and I'm just going to be showing you what's a simple, quick and efficient way to create something like that in Revit. Uh, now we're just going to be jumping quickly into Revit. But before that, I would just like to ask you to make sure to like this video and also make sure to subscribe, not only because that will allow you not to miss any of my future videos, but also because it will make the alpaca happy and we all want that. Okay, now let's jump into Revit. Uh, and as you can see, here I am. And I'm just going to go here to models and then I'm going to go to new. And for the template file, I'm just going to be choosing my architecture design template. Now, if you want to check out my templates, they're available on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below this video. And then also up in the cards. So check it out if you're interested. Now I'm just going to quickly click OK. And as soon as Revit starts up, we're going to be just creating a simple building, uh, adding a simple roof, and then creating the standing seam effect. So let's see okay here rabbit started up uh, and now let's go here into the level one floor plan i'm just going to go to the wall tool uh, and then for the wall uh, let's pick out just a regular exterior wall uh, and then i'm just going to be using the line tool and just create something quite simple like this Okay, there we go. We have a simple house here. I uh, hit the escape key a couple of times. Now let's jump into level two. So I'm just going to go here to level two in the project browser, double click to jump up. And then let's go to the roof tool. And for this roof, the overhang is going to be set to 70 centimeters. Uh, and then also I'm going to be using the pick walls tool to create the roof. Uh, and also make sure that it says defines slope. So the slope should be turned on. And then we just come to each side and click. Or you can just use the tab key and select the whole chain of lines. Uh, that's really up to you. Uh, and then finally, we just hit finish. And here we have our roof. Uh, now for the roof type, I'm just going to go with my 20 centimeter roof type, the thinner type, and then let's go to the 3D view just to see what that looks like. Okay, it looks fairly nice. And now if we wanted to create those standing seams, uh, well, it would be kind of troubling. We can go with the material, but that definitely doesn't look good in uh, in renderings. Uh, and then also we can try to model it, perhaps some uh, components or something like that, perhaps some beams, uh, but that wouldn't uh, be efficient either. Uh, so the most efficient uh, approach that I've seen is by using a separate roof. So you just select the existing roof here uh, you then go here to the clipboard, you go copy to clipboard, and then you go to paste. Uh, now what you want to do is open up the drop menu, so you don't go straight to paste. You open up the drop menu and then you go to align to the same place. So what this is going to do is just have two overlapping roofs. Uh, now, in order to see both roofs, we can go here to the base offset. Uh, now, keep in mind that the, that the new roof is still selected. So here, if I just type in, I don't know, something like 50 centimeters and then hit apply, as you can see, uh, now here we have two roofs. One is above and then one is below. Now, you want to select the roof above. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay, select the roof that's above. You want to go here to the properties panel and then you want to scroll all the way down and find slope glazing. Now, if we select that, let's wait for a few moments, it's going to look like this. Uh, well, if you're actually using uh, one of the regular templates, it's not going to have these mullions. So you have to select the roof, go into edit type, and then you have to load in all of the mullions and set the grids. Uh, I set them to fixed distance just for this. Uh, now here we do have to make some modifications. So even though the, my particular uh, sloped glazing roof is already set up, uh, for this particular tutorial, we have to set it up further. 
So uh, the first step here in the construction is to go to the curtain panel and the panel is currently set to glazed and you want to change that for empty. So we don't want any panels. We're just using the curtain wall or curtain roof in this case in order to uh, apply our standing seams and mullions are going to be used for that. So we don't really uh, care for panels. So we want to turn them off. And now you might be thinking that none is going to do the trick, but actually it doesn't. You want to go with empty. None uh, doesn't work for some reason. Uh, okay, the next step is to go to the grid. Uh, now for the grid, I'm just going to add a spacing uh, for the uh, horizontal grid of uh, something like, let's see, let's go with something like 40 centimeters, hit apply, wait for a few moments just to recalculate everything. Okay, it's going to delete some mullions. There we go. And then for the grid two, uh, you just want to go and set that to none. So we don't want, oops, we don't want any grid here. Hit apply. Again, wait for a few moments. Delete grid line. Uh, okay, delete the mullions. And there we go. It looks something like this. Uh, and uh, depending on what you're trying to create, this might be it. So if I click OK zoom in a little bit and as you can see this is what that looks like. Now one additional thing that might be an issue here uh, is the fact that these mullions are quite large. Uh, these mullions are I think they're like uh, 150 millimeters by 150 which is way too large so what you want to do is select the roof again like so edit type and then go here to the uh, grids and then for the grid one Let's go and set this to the 30 millimeter square mullion. Of course, you can change this to something smaller uh, even, but for now, let's go with 30 millimeter square and just do that for all of these. Yeah, just for all of them, hit apply. There we go. As you can see, it's going to make them much, much smaller. Uh, now I'm just going to OK out of that. Now if you want to customize them even further, what you can do is go to the project browser, scroll all the way down, uh, go to families, expand that. Let's collapse this. Uh, then you want to go here to detail or sorry, curtain, curtain wall mullions, expand that, go to rectangular ones, 30 millimeters square. You can open that up and then here you can play with the uh, thicknesses and things like that. So for example, here I can just reduce this to 0 0.5 on both sides Hit apply. Okay. And as you can see, it's quite thinner. So now if I zoom in, this looks uh, more like a standing seam roof. Uh, now also here at the bottom, you might not want to have these. So you can actually get rid of that by going again, selecting the roof, going to edit type. And then those are here the border types. So for this one, I think it's the grid two is the problem. So we can just get rid of, uh, we'll just go here to none and to none for the border types, hit apply, I delete mullions. There we go. So as you can see, it just deletes the, the ones at the bottom and that's what you want to see. Okay, and there we go. Now I can just select this roof again. I can set the base offset down to something a bit smaller. So let's go with something like three centimeters. I think that will work. Okay, that's way below. So I think 23, perhaps. Let's try 23. There is a little bit of back and forth. Yeah, I, I guess it can go a little bit further out. Let's try 24 might be too much. No, 24 works. And there we go. So now we have a really nice standing seam roof. And if you zoom in, it's going to look way, way better. Again, we can, ah, let's try 25. I don't know. I like to play around till it looks perfect. Let's see here. Uh, perhaps a good way to, to make sure that everything looks correct uh, is to go to level one or level two and then run a section through this thing. So when you run a section through it, uh, it's a lot easier to just figure out uh, where things are at. So here, if we take a look at the mullion, yeah, it could go down just a little bit. So perhaps if I move it, let's see if it's going to allow me to move it down. Okay, it is perfect. I think now, we are there. It's perfect. Okay, that's really, really good. If we zoom in, looks good. On the renderings especially, it's going to look good. So it's a really quick and simple solution. 
and it gives you the desired result. Now here, we don't have one on the top, so let's try to add that one as well, just to kind of complete this, uh, uh, totally kind of complete this model. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, go here to the Malian tool, one grid line, click, okay, it's the wrong Malian, so let's go back. So we want the 30 millimeters square, let's see. There we go, so we can just add those mullions on top, just like that. Now the, the downside is it places them like this at an angle, so it's really it really depends uh, on what you're trying to create, but I think it looks good like this, really, really good. Uh, now also, if you're serious about learning uh, about roofs in Revit, they have a whole course on roofs, a Revit masterclass on roofs, uh, and you can find that on uh, my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below this video and also up in the cards. So make sure to check it out if you're interested. And also for this standing seam roof, uh, if you have any other ideas uh, on how to do this, and uh, if you think this approach is good or bad, please tell me in the comment section just below this video. I'm always interested in hearing about your comments. And also if you have any suggestions for future tutorials that I might do, I'll, I'm interested in that as well. Thank you for watching guys. Make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.